Good evening, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Thanks for watching TCM. All month, we've been celebrating the history of Warner Brothers in honor of the studio's 100th anniversary. Tonight, we're looking at Warner Brothers movies from the 1970s and 80s, an era that marked an important new chapter in the studio's history. 1966, studio head and co-founder Jack Warner sold Warner Brothers to a company called Seven Arts. Three years later, another sale rebranded the company as Warner Communications Incorporated. That same year, 1969, DC Comics was folded into the Warner's family, and along with it, the studio acquired some of the most iconic characters ever created, including Batman, Wonder Woman, and the title character of our next movie, a hero with a greater rate of speed than a bullet fired from a gun, stronger than a train, and he can jump over high structures in like one bounce from 1978, Superman. Created by writer Jerry Siegel and artist Joe Schuster, Superman first appeared in comic books in 1938. Over the next 20 years, Superman's popularity and presence in American culture only grew thanks to radio productions, movie serials, a 1951 feature film, and a television series. With all that hype, it might have seemed like a big budget A-level Hollywood feature was long overdue by the time this 1978 movie premiered. You'd think, but blockbuster superhero movies, now a mainstay in Hollywood, were not part of the cinematic landscape before the late 70s. Still, producers Ilya Salkind and Pierre Spengler had so much faith in the idea, they got Warner Brothers to approve a $55 million budget an unprecedented and astronomical amount at the time. The investment in making this film paid off, and the movie became a worldwide hit, earning three Oscar nominations, including one for its score by John Williams. It also won a special Oscar for its visual effects and spawned a franchise of three sequels, starring Christopher Reeve as Superman, with a cast that also includes Margot Kidder as Lois Lane, Marlon Brando as Superman's father, and Gene Hackman as Lex Luthor. 1978, directed by Richard Donner, with a screenplay reworked by my cousin Tom Mankiewicz. You'll see him listed as a creative consultant in the opening credits. This is Superman. Warner Brothers put up $55 million to make this 1978 version of Superman. The title role went to an unknown 24-year-old named Christopher Reeve because director Richard Donner thought the character would seem less convincing if a famous movie star played him. But the rest of the cast included some of the biggest names in Hollywood. Gene Hackman, Ned Beatty, Jackie Cooper, Glenn Ford, and Marlon Brando in the role of Superman's father, jor -El. Here's a great story that director Richard Donner told me, told it to a lot of people. Gene Hackman was a big star by 1978, already an Oscar winner for The French Connection from 1971. He and Donner had never met, but Donner was thrilled to get Hackman in his movie. Sometime in probably 1976, Hackman came to the production headquarters in London where the movie was going to be shot. He came in looking like it was the mid-70s with a big afro and a horseshoe mustache. Hackman tells Donner he doesn't plan to lose either one when he plays Lex Luthor, who, you know, is famously bald and clean-shaven. Donner figures by the time they shoot the movie, they'll work it out. And they do for the hair issue bald cap and Luthor appearing with different wigs throughout the picture. But Hackman's mustache is still very much a problem. Anyway, when Hackman comes in for his makeup test close to the start of production, he sees that Donner has a bold mustache as well. What Hackman doesn't know is that Donner's mustache is a prosthetic created by the makeup man. Donner and Hackman admire each other's stashes, you know, the way guys probably do. Then Donner tells Hackman his stash has got to go. Hackman says no. So Donner suggests, you know, reluctantly, that okay, they'll both shave. And Hackman reluctantly agrees. The makeup man helps Hackman shave off his mustache, and then Donner whoosh, gleefully peels off his fake one. Donner said Hackman was initially enraged, but they were soon laughing. When Richard Donner, who was a very funny guy, died in 2021, Hackman paid tribute to his friend. Dick made things fun, he said. That's why all of his films turned out that way, too. Coming up, a blockbuster superhero picture from Warner Brothers in 1989 starring Michael Keaton and Jack Nicholson. Batman is next.